Good morning, Park Avenue. Let's begin this time together of worship, praise, adoration, fellowship by turning to hymn number 384, one of the many, many, many written by Charles Wesley. Love divine, all love excelling. There is no greater love than his, that he should lay down his life for us. Stand as you're able to sing 384, love divine, all love excelling. Love divine, all love's excelling, joy of heaven to earth come down. Fix in us thy humble dwelling, all thy faithful mercies crown. Jesus, thou art all compassion, pure unbounded of the heart. Visit us with thy salvation, enter in thee trembling heart. Breathe, oh, breathe thy loving spirit into every troubled breast. Let us all in thee inherit. Let us find our second rest. Take away our bent to sinning. Alpha and Omega be. End of faith as its beginning. Set our hearts at liberty. Come, Almighty, to deliver. Let us all thy life receive. Suddenly return and never, never more thy temples leave. Thee we would be always praising. Leave thee as thy hosts above. Pray and praise thee without ceasing. Glory perfect love finish then thy new creation pure and spotless let us be let us see thy great salvation perfectly restored in thee changed from glory into glory till in heaven we take our place we cast our crowns before thee, lost in wonder, love, and praise. Amen. You may be seated with that hope in your hearts today. Hey, good morning, Park Avenue Church. How's everybody doing today? Great? Nah? Huh? Fred? Fred, you okay? You're okay. All right. So glad all of you are here. You know they call this Sunday, you know what they call it? They call it Low Sunday. Low Sunday. You know why? It's the Sunday after Easter. They call it Low Sunday. And yet here you are, the faithful remnant has made its way into uh, the house of God for worship. So glad all of you are here today. Uh, I just realized that we may have more, but today there are three birthdays in our congregation. I don't typically do this, but this is remarkable. Same day, uh, Otis Bennett, Tim Essenberg, and Whitney Carlson all have today as their birthday. Did you guys know that? And I see, I see two of them here. Otis, who's 39 years old today, and, and Tim, I believe, 29, we, so we've got a 29-year-old and a 39-year-old, and we don't typically do this, but since it's a remarkable threesome today, uh, can we sing happy birthday to these gentlemen and Whitney in, a, in abstention today? All right, you guys stand up, come on, come on. Not you, John. <laughs> All right, here we go. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday Tim and Whitney and Otis, happy birthday to you. All right. Do 
Did you guys know you had the same birthday, Tim, Otis? Okay, now, now you're connected. You're connected. That's what we're about here at Park Avenue is connecting each other, right? Connected to one another. So if you're watching us online, we're glad you're here, and we hope glad you're connecting with us uh, online, and we'd love for you to connect with us in person sometime if you're in the area. Um, and we're going to just take a moment and connect with each other. Maybe you can find out something about somebody else you do not know, or maybe somebody else has a birthday today that you did not know. And uh, introduce yourself, find the name of someone that you perhaps have not met. And uh, we'll do that for just a couple of minutes. Let's greet one another. working now awesome good morning good morning church it's the time in our worship service where we get to celebrate what we've seen God up to in our lives and in the lives of people we love so if you want to come up just share a couple quick sentences um, I'll show you how to do it my name is Aaron I am the thank you I'm the minister of spiritual care here at park and so I'm going to show you I'm going to tell you I'm going to show you how to do this by sharing my celebration which is that I am halfway through my very last seminary class. Five years later, I'm gonna graduate next month, so that is what I'm celebrating. <laughs> okay, so if you have something that you wanna share, come on up. Hi, good morning, Park Avenue. My name is Ivy, and I'm here to celebrate my father's uh, he's passed, he turned 93 on March 25th, and my son Martin will be 29 tomorrow on April 8th. All right, anybody else have something they want to celebrate? Good morning, Park Avenue. My name is Olu Wally. People call me Wally. Um, I want to celebrate my brother, a pastor. That he came from Nigeria to visit us. He's been here one time. <laughs> Pastor Mayo. Thanks, Wally. Anybody else? What can we celebrate today? I want to celebrate at the gathering room that everybody that brings stuff, we just really appreciate everything you do for us, too. And I want to say that my grandson is having a boy. 
Praise God. All right. Okay. okay. I can wait. God's up to a lot. Good morning, church. My name is Kathy Giles Stewart. I am here to tell you that we serve a good God and celebrating him and life. On last Sunday, Josephine Bunton was in our presence. And today she's in the hospital and she's still doing well. Thank God. Thanks. Good morning, Park Avenue. John Walker's with me. Uh, good morning. Oh. oh, my name's Al. I thought everybody. <laughs> Been around here so long, I thought everyone knew Al. <laughs> anyway, we would like to um, celebrate and praise uh, the administration for last week with Resurrection Sunday. Just a fantastic job. And we'd like to also praise the, the choir. Just, just, just beautiful. So they too often don't get the, the uh, accolades like they should. Okay, last call. All right, praise God for all the things. All right, great. Let's uh, stand as you're able. Let's uh, join together in our call to worship this morning. We get to uh, call one another into worship as really an echo of God's call to all of us. And so at Park Avenue, we say this because we mean it. It's on the screen. Let's let them hear you outside today, okay? Here we go. God of hope, we see your love poured out for us in all the world. Teach us to live together as one community. Let's worship together. Amen. We're here this morning to give thanks to our good God for he's worthy to be praised. He has blessed us abundantly. And we're going to celebrate him today. Join us.
There comes a time in all of our lives when we have to make a decision. And we don't, sometimes we make decisions lightly. We don't realize how important the decision, making the decision is. And when you make the decision to follow goodness and mercy in your God, when you make a decision for Christ, it's one of the, it's the only thing that matters because you're making a decision where your soul is going to go for eternity. And sometimes we don't really understand the weightiness of that. We're pledging allegiance to an almighty God. We're pledging allegiance to eternity with him. And now we're going to sing about our affections towards the God who has saved us and resurrected us with him. He defeated death and hell for us. Hallelujah. We didn't deserve it. Thank you. But he still says, come unto me all you labor and I'll give you rest. Yes. I can, how can you not love a God like that? We love you. Sing with me, please. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, oh, my soul, Yeah. 
Thank you, Jesus. High above the earth. We magnify you this morning. We exalt thee. We put you first and forefront in our in our life. We put you in forefront in our attention this morning. We want to be mindful of where you move, how you move this morning. We eager to hear from you, Lord. We care about you. We need you. We want you in our life. So we enter this service with great humility and great expectation. We celebrated Easter, your resurrection, and with it we want to resurrect with you. We want to bury the things in our life that needs to be buried, and we making room for what is to come. So this morning, Lord, we celebrate you, we magnify you, and we are eagerly wait to hear from you. And all the people of God say, Amen. Amen. Rhonda. This is my granddaughter, Georgia, my grandson, Corbin, and my daughter, Karen. Good morning. Please join us in the responsive readings of Acts 4, verse 32 to 35. The whole congregation of believers was united as one, one heart, one mind. No one said, that's mine, you can't have it. They shared everything. The apostles gave powerful witness to the resurrection of the master Jesus, and grace was on all of them. And so it turned out that the God My name is Ryan, and I'm the chair. Hey, I'm the chair elect of the finance committee, and one of the newly elected members of the leadership board. Um, as mentioned in the bulletin, after our service today, the church leadership board will be hosting a quarterly congregational touch base to provide everybody with an update on what's happening with the church. This will include a brief financial up, uh, financial health update as well. Um, as a reminder, there are several ways to give here at Park, besides the offering plates that may be on their way down the aisle. You can scan the Venmo barcode above me, also found in the bulletin, or you can text GIVE to 84321 and follow the prompts. Today's offering scripture reading is Acts 20, 35. In all this I have given you an example that by such work we must support the weak. 
remembering the words of the Lord Jesus, for he himself, it is more blessed to give than to receive. How many of us love the anticipation of giving a present to a loved one? The excitement we feel watching them open a present that we have meticulously planned, knowing how much joy it will bring to them. Speaking for myself, often that is more fun than receiving a present. How many of us feel the same way when giving to the church? Truthfully, the act of giving during offering time doesn't often bring the same level of enjoyment, but why? I must remind myself that giving to our church has an incredible amount of tangible impact on our lives as a congregation, both in person and online, on the lives of our literal neighbors, the lives of our community, and the list goes on. Watching all the excited children go into Sunday school should remind us of the power our offering has on their lives. Seeing the pictures of the free food distribution Park, Park Ave hosts every month should remind us of the blessings when we give. The same for you when we walk down the uh, same for when we walk past the legal clinic or health clinic offices here at Park. How much joy do you receive hearing music, amazing music, week in and week out? The support we give helps our music ministry thrive, not only for our enjoyment on Sundays, but also allows them to spread the joy outside these sanctuary walls. So why don't I feel the same to give into our church as I do giving a present to a loved one? Maybe because there isn't the instant gratification I receive watching someone unwrap a gift. Maybe it's because I can't always see the blessings our church provides us each and every day. These are poor excuses. I should feel the same level of excitement, but tenfold when giving to Park. Today, I'd like to encourage all of us to give cheerfully, whether that's on our own time, whether that's our time and our talents, or financially, just as we give to those we love. At this time, I'll invite the ushers to come forward.
Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for your generosity. Thank you for all the gifts we continue to receive. Thank you for giving generously to us so that we can bless our community in return. God, we ask that you be with our church and give us wisdom for the future. Help us to serve our community and be good stewards with the gifts you have given us. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. joining us online. I know there will be several of you because not only is it low attendance Sunday, as Greg pointed out, but also the Minneapolis Public Schools are on spring break this week. Maybe seeing a few less families in our midst. Um, I'm just so glad you're here today. Uh, my name is Annie. If we haven't had a chance to meet, I'm our pastor to families here at Park Avenue. And kids, I've got something special for you today if you're here. Um, I actually have a job for you to do, but it's an artistic job. And by kids, I always mean children slash teenagers slash children at heart amongst us. Um, I've got, I've stuck some paper and markers down here in the front row, so I'm, in a minute I'm going to ask if you want to come grab some, you can, okay? Today we're going to be talking about how God is unexpected in many ways. And um, I have a special job for you. Would you today, during the service, even if you're up in the balcony, you can come down, you'll have time, okay? Um, would you create a picture of God for me? Now, I want you to be as creative as you want. Like I always tell the kids, there is not a wrong answer here, right? There is not a right answer either. When you think of God in light of how unexpected God can be, what do you imagine? What do you see? Um, please, come forth. Don't be scared. I put it right down here in the front pew. So if you, you can wiggle your bodies up here, grab paper. I know you're going to ask, can you draw more than one? The answer is always yes. <laughs> please come down. Grab a few markers. Grab a piece of paper. Come on down. Don't be afraid. I'm going to keep talking, okay? But you do not need to be afraid to come on down and snag it. Please do. Um, while they're coming up, I, I do want to start this morning with a quick plug. So today I'm going to be talking about new wineskins. If you'd like to experience faith in a, a new and fresh way, one way to do that, grown-ups in this room, is to come and spend time with our kids. Now, our kids here are bright, and they are loving, and they have wonderful eyes to see the world in a new way and see God in a new way. And also, I'm sure you've noticed in the past few months, there are about a million kids here. <laughs> we need you, and yes, I mean you, I mean you, to come and nurture this faith and also to learn from it, adults. If you can spend time with our kids here once a month on Sunday morning, that is 12 times a year, I always say 12 times a year, will you reach out to me after service? You can do that via email. You can come find me. I promise you this. This is the promise I'll make to you. It'll be crazy at times, but it'll be one of the best parts of your month every month. It will. Now, I'm going to say, if you have drawn a picture and you want to come back up, at the end, I'm going to ask you to bring them to me. We're going to find a spot to display them, okay? If you want to draw another one, you just wiggle your way on down here during service. That is just fine. It is okay with me, and it is okay with all the other grown-ups in the room to come grab another piece of paper. Uh, this January, Brandon Stanton, who is the artist behind the social media account, Humans of New York, which some of you might be familiar with, did a series of interviews. <clears throat> If you don't know Humans of New York, it's this innovative platform that story tells, where Brandon literally stops and photographs and interviews just people on the street. And all kinds of amazing stories have been captured as a result of this, and it's grown beyond New York. It's become a worldwide platform for sharing the stories of people. In January, Brandon did this short series of interviews of kids who were getting ready to experience a big change into something new. And one of those interviews stuck with me, a young man he interviewed who was getting ready to leave fifth grade and move to middle school. This kid talks through the grief 
of leaving this stage of life. Describing his, how his friendships will change and what becoming a teenager will mean to his family and for his family. And he says this quote, which I have just been thinking about for months, little sixth grade or fifth grade boy. At some point, you're going to stop fitting in your favorite shoes. And at some point, it'll be the last time going to the muse a museum with your parents. It'll all stop. And all of a sudden, you'll be a teenager. And I, I don't want to let go. I just don't want to let go. Now today you might not be letting go of your childhood. <laughs> and as our resident children's person, I hope none of you ever do. <laughs> but none of us are strangers to that feeling, are we? It is so hard to say goodbye to things. And I'm not here this morning to wish away the very normal and important grief we feel at the ending of something. And yet, Jesus seems to love and embrace bringing something new to life. He did it repeatedly in the stories of the New Testament, including the one we're going to read today. Last week, if you were here, Greg talked about being resurrection people, of looking for hope around us and within us. And this is a response to the resurrection of Christ, that we look for new life, that we hope for new life, even when it doesn't make sense. And a lot of times, it doesn't make sense. And um, just so you know, I typically hate to do this, but we're actually going to leap backwards in the story of Jesus today. So if you were here last week, Jesus' death, resurrection, and he, he's back alive. But today we're going to hop backwards in the story. Um, this is not your typical after Easter scripture, but I think there's something to pick up here in light of the resurrection that reminds us that Jesus came to do something new, something unexpected, a change in way, what things had been before. Let's take a look and dive into Matthew this morning. We're in Matthew chapter 9, verses 14 through 17. We're in the International Children's Bible this morning. Hear the word of the Lord. Then the followers of John came to Jesus, and they said to Jesus, uh, We and the Pharisees often give up eating, but your followers don't. Why? Jesus answered, mm, The friends of the bridegroom are not sad while he is with them. But the time will come when the bridegroom will leave them, and then his friends are sad, and they'll give up eating. When someone sews a patch over a hole in an old coat, he never uses a piece of cloth that is not yet shrunk. If he does, the patch will shrink and pull away from the colt, and then the hole will be worse. And because they didn't totally get it, a third example. Also, people never pour new wine into old leather bags for holding wine. If they do... The old bags will break, the wine will spill, the wine bags will be ruined. But people always pour new wine into new wine bags. And then the wine and the wine bags both will continue to be good. Um, before we dive in today, I want to show you the scripture one other way in just a short video clip. This is someone's imagining of this exact story. I'm going to ask Anne to play it for us on the screen behind me. You know, Rabbi, I've been meaning to ask you about fasting, a thing I'm very happy not to be doing right now. John required us to fast at regular intervals. He said the sacrifice of fasting is integral to any serious commitment to God. And yet, you've never once asked any of us to fast. Oh, there was the time on Shabbat where we ate the head of grain, but we were just hungry. That wasn't intentional fasting. What are you getting at? Well, the Pharisees fast all the time. Make a big scene out of it, disfiguring their faces. If it's such a big deal to them, and they find out we don't do it, I don't know, don't you think they could possibly weaponize that against us? Can the wedding guests mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? The days are coming, the bridegroom will be taken away from them, and they will fast. Taken away? Hold that thought. When you fasted before, what did you pray for? Your arrival. Right, so what would be the point now? Exactly.
Eden, do you have any wine fermenting right at the moment? Oh, uh, yes, in the back room. Little James, can you please take down that empty wine skin? Sure. Ooh, I feel a lesson coming. <laughs> Eden, when you last checked on the wine, what was it doing? What it always does at this stage. Um, sort of bubbling, popping out little plumes of air now and then. James, how does that wine skin feel? Uh, stiff, not very flexible. So if Eden were to put her new wine into that container, what would happen? I don't know. The old leather can't stretch anymore. The new wine would keep expanding and it would explode. And so new wine must be put into fresh wine skins. I would be the first one to admit that. I don't, don't get it. The waves of the kingdom I am bringing into this world will not fit into old containers or frameworks. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Amen. Let me pray for us. Will you bow your heads, close your eyes? Give yourselves just a moment. Lord, thank you for reminding us that your word is fresh. It has something for us today. And um, the way that you loved your people with uh, humor and kindness. Um, Lord, will you speak to us today from uh, these words for something that we can carry into our week to be more like you. We love you. In your holy name, amen. Oh, I always love these teaching moments with Jesus. <laughs> when we get to this part of the story in Matthew, it's been a, a pretty hectic week. <laughs> Jesus had healed a man, and the teachers of law got pretty angry about it. And then Jesus calls Matthew, our resident tax collector, and the teachers of the law got pretty mad about it. <laughs> and then we come to our story here where the followers of John the Baptist point out that Jesus is not following the rules and that if he doesn't, the Pharisees are probably going to get, what, pretty mad at him. <laughs> and Jesus finally says here, in this story that is recorded in three of the four Gospels, I'm doing something new. And it's not going to look like what it was. And if you're going to follow me, embracing the new part of new life is going to be part of it. Not an easy part, maybe, but a necessary part of seeing what God is doing. Now, churches are just famously good at embracing change. Am I right, part? <laughs> if I was texting you right now, here's the part where I would insert, like, a huge laughing emo face emoji, even though I've been told by all the teenagers in my life that that emoji is no longer cool. <laughs> but technology is an area of my life where I don't embrace new very well. <laughs> but churches? Aww. Oh. Churches are famous for what? Holding to tradition. For loving the way things are. Even when the very people who Jesus sat with at every chance he got are often left out and alienated from the space. Ooh, if we are to be a church that follows Jesus, a people that follows Jesus, looking for where God is doing something new and running into it with full hearts and open arms is going to be a part of it, friends. Let's take a look at three quick things to notice in this story together this morning. I promise I'll be quick since that intro is so long. <laughs> Thing number one, listen, Jesus never said, if you look back there, Jesus never said, old is trash. <laughs> when Jesus talks about the wine and the wineskin, here is what he doesn't say. He doesn't say, round up all the old wineskins, let's just dump out the wine, and then let's take the skins out and back and uh, burn them. He doesn't say, ew, old wine is super gross. Let's only drink new wine. No, he doesn't say any of that. In fact, I actually love that he chose wine for his metaphor, something that is notoriously what? Better when it's older. <laughs> there is a very silly storyline and a very silly sitcom from the early 2000s where a man named Barney claims that new is always better, and his friends call him on it, telling him he can either, either have like this beautifully aged old scotch or you can have the newest scotch the bar offers, which is a uh, grape scotch called Jumbo Jim's Grape Spot Scotch. <laughs> and he sticks to his claim, 
choking down this grape liquid while the waitress warns him to not let it touch his skin. <laughs> New is not always better, friends, and Jesus is not asking us to get rid of everything familiar. He's not asking us or telling us that our traditions are bad or wrong. In fact, we want to learn from the old wine when we make new wine, don't we? Good and bad things. But he's pointing out something important here. If we only ever drink old wine, eventually, you know what's going to happen? We're going to run out if we never make new wine. <laughs> and if we make new wine and try to force it into the old wineskins to mature, as they pointed out in the video, we're going to lose both. The wineskins will break, the new wine will fall on the ground, and that new wine will spill, and it will go elsewhere. Is there a lesson in there for us, church? The old wine isn't something to be thrown out, but something to be appreciated alongside the new. This is a classic, both and, isn't it? So thing one, Jesus didn't say old is trash. Thing two, two kinds of new, two kinds of new. There are two words that can be translated to our word new in the, um, from the Greek. The first one is kainos. Can you guys say that with me? Ready? One, two, three. Yes. The second one's called nous. One, two, three. Look at you learning Greek left and right here. Kainos is a, a new in kind and contra contrasts against what was. So it says, this is new based on what was old. It's comparative. Naus is a different kind of new. Are you ready for this? It speaks to never been born, something we've never seen before. Kainos reaches backwards to look in light of the past. And now us looks forward to something that we can't imagine because we've never seen it before. Two kinds of new. Anybody want to guess which one is used here? You have a 50-50 chance of being right. Just shout it out. Anyone want to guess? What? You're all too scared? No kids want to guess? What do you think? Okay, I heard now us. I'm going to tell you, if you guessed now us, or if you guessed kind of guess what? You're both right. They're both in this verse, which is really interesting. Both are used. Um, when Jesus is talking about the new wine, he uses the word naus, new wine, never been seen before, never been experienced. But when Jesus is talking about the container, that new wineskin, the word that is used is kainos. Interesting, isn't it? What Jesus was doing is doing something new that has never been seen before, something we can't recognize there we use a brand new, a naus. And the world that will hold it and keep it safe, the container, this church, this world, we're not ignoring or pretending that the past doesn't exist. We're looking backwards to see what's new. We're holding both our future and our present and our past at once, good and bad. We're seeing what's new in light of what was, and what we want to bring forward with us, and what will no longer work, what will no longer work. We make way for that new wine that no one has ever seen or tasted or known before to exist and to flourish. We get to do that. We do. All right, here we go. We're moving on to point three. Point one, Jesus didn't say old is trash. Point two, two kinds of new, two kinds of new. And finally, in what is almost always the third point in my sermons, don't miss it. Oh, friends, ultimately what Jesus was saying here was don't miss what God is doing. Jesus was building something completely new, and he was doing it with who? Tax collectors, prostitutes, wilderness preachers, <laughs> leprosy patients, women, Samaritans, the poor, the sick, the left out. What Jesus was doing was prophetic. It was new. It was now. It wasn't from human origin. It was God. Oh, and God is still moving that way today. And there are still those who don't like it, whose power depends on maintaining status quo, huh? Those who don't expect God to always color, or those who do expect God to always color in the lines. <laughs> and the truth is, it's so easy to judge those people in hindsight, isn't it? I know that we'd all love to believe, right? If I had lived in first century Palestine, I would have dropped my fishing net. I would have left my water jar. I would have followed Jesus the very moment he reached out for me. Woo, 
but there are days, I'll only speak for myself now, where I fold my arms. And I turn my face backwards. And I look for God only where I expect God to be. We tend to look God, look for God where we expect them to be, don't we? Even while God is shouting, tapping us on the shoulder, and saying, I'm right here, turn around, pay attention. We want God to use people and methods that we approve of. And yet, it seems that God's favorite way of working in the world is what? Right past that, right outside our expectations, right outside of our rules. And you would think after all this time, we would know that our God who moves in the rushing river and the howling wind outside our windows this morning cannot fit safely in our categories or inside our traditions, even here at Park. All right, friends. In light of being resurrection people of hope that we claimed we wanted to be last week, what do we do? Well, church, I hope that we can work together to become a kainos people who look for the now swine everywhere we go. Would you walk alongside me here at Park, looking for ways that God is moving and becoming the resurrection people of hope that our world needs? Would you? May it be so. Amen. Thank you, Hannah. When we take uh, <clears throat> communion, it is uh, connected to um, what Annie has shared with us. When we, it says, do this in remembrance of me, when Jesus says, do this in remembrance of me, he's actually saying, do this in participation in what I am doing, what I have done, what I am doing, what I will, will do. So communion in remembrance, it is a participation in the life of Christ participation in the present with what God has done in the past to give us hope for the future. Communion is one of those things that is very traditional. Many of you have done it since you were very little. Maybe it's new to some of you. But it's been something that's been practiced for, what, 2,000 plus years uh, in, in terms of the Christian faith when Jesus instituted it in the upper room. But it is... So it is traditional, but it is also something new as we participate in it every time we take it. And God can give us something new as we take the bread and drink the cup or put the bread into the cup as we do here. Something new can happen every time we take the body and the blood of Christ. That's the way I like to approach communion, not just as some static event, that happened 2,000 years ago, and then I'm gonna try to figure out in my head how I'm gonna remember something significant, but where is God meeting me today? Now, in this bread, in this cup, in this body, in this community, where do we see this resurrected Christ doing something new today, in this moment, at 11.01 a.m. here at Park Avenue Church? At Park Avenue, we take communion by intinction, which means um, we dip it into the cup uh, and then dip the bread into the cup. We take it. We also have uh, gluten-free um, snackable items <laughs> with a cup and an individually wrapped wafer so that it doesn't get cross-contaminated with anything else. So these are available uh, to you um, if you'd like um, as well. And everybody is welcome. You don't have to be a card-carrying member of Park Avenue Church. 
you don't have to be a member of any church. This table is God's table. It is open to you. If you want to experience something of God's grace in a fresh, new way, this table is um, open to you. So Christ our Lord invites to this table all who love him, who earnestly repent of sin <clears throat> and seek to live in peace and reconciliation with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sins before God and one another in a prayer of confession. Let's pray together. Holy God, we come to you confessing that we have we've turned away from you. Truth is, we've not sought you, sought what you desire for us, but instead, we've desired what others have. The truth is, we've clamored to have worldly success, leaving behind your ways of justice and righteousness. We have put our desires above our neighbor's needs. We have excused ourselves from helping the folks that have been marginalized and those who are oppressed. God, would you forgive us? Forgive us for our foolishness, for our self-absorbed ways. Help us to receive your kindness that draws us back to you. We pray that you renew our commitment to you so that we may live according to your ways of justice and righteousness and peacemaking. New wine and new wineskins that we would live by, most of all, love. We pray this in the name of Christ, our Savior, our Redeemer, and our friend. I'm going to give just a moment just for silent prayers. So you want to, <clears throat> your own silent prayers of confession this morning. Would you hear these words of assurance? The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. God's mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. They are new this morning, right now, right here for you. God's faithfulness is great. I want you to repeat after me. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. So on the night that Jesus offered himself up for us in that dark, dank, small upper room, he took bread and he lifted it to heaven and he gave thanks for the bread. He broke it. And he said to each one of those folks who were gathered there with him that day, as I say to you, this is my body, broken for you. Take and eat, and every time you do it, may you do it in participation, participating in what I have done and what I continue to do for you. After that, he took a cup, he lifted it, lifted it to heaven and gave thanks, and he said, this is my blood which is poured out for you, blood of a new covenant. Every time you drink of it, do so in remembrance, participation of what I have done and what I continue to do for you. Let's pray together. Lord, we pray that you pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us who are gathered here in this space, those who are within the sound of my voice over the internet. And we pray you pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and wine, that you would somehow, in the mystery of your grace, make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God, now and forever. And now we pray, Lord, as you taught your disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let me invite the uh, communion servers to come. serve the congregation and you'll serve each other, okay? Who's doing what? Please come as the uh, ushers direct you, and you're welcome to uh, kneel at the altar and pray. The gluten-free uh, containers are here with Otis, and uh, if you would like me to bring it to you, if you are unable or don't want to come down here, then just raise your hand and the ushers will direct me, and I'd be glad to bring you uh, communion as well. Come the fount of every blessing to my heart to sing thy grace streams of mercy never ceasing call for songs of loudest praise teach me Yeah. 
it soothes my doubts and calms my fears. And it dries all my tears, the blood that gives so glad all of you are here today on this first Sunday of April, celebrating communion here at uh, Park Avenue Church, and uh, my prayer is that, uh, <clears throat> that you leave here today with just a, something of the taste of grace in your mouth, that maybe you have experienced something, just something that gives you hope for this day, hope for this next week, something grounded in the love of God, grounded in this God who continues to want to do something new in each of our lives. May we see it. May we experience it. May we, may we be attentive to it. In the people that come across our paths, in the things we experience, may we be surprised by this grace this week. There's a couple of things I want to draw your attention to. Uh, as it was mentioned earlier, after immediately following the service today, our board is going to, has a quarterly touch base meeting. Uh, we'd love for you, the board would love for you to come and hear what's going on and uh, go to the gathering room and grab a cup of coffee and a snack and come down into the dining room. And uh, we'll start that in just about 10 or 15 minutes. Um, many of you know uh, Stan Sear. Stan's, um, t Stan passed away a couple of weeks ago. His uh, celebration of life service will be this Saturday at 2 p.m. here in the sanctuary. Visitation will be in the gathering room at 1 p.m. There will be a reception that follows that. So I know many of you are close to, um, to Stan. Stan was one of my favorite people. Um, let's celebrate his life uh, this, uh, this Saturday. And there's several other announcements uh, in the bulletin, uh, ways to get involved, and I hope you will. By the way, thank you for all of you who brought uh, snacks for the gathering room last Sunday. It was quite the spread. Yes. And I, don't, I know there are a lot of you who did that, and it was fantastic. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, now can I see your eyes as we leave today and receive this word of grace? Just look up here if I can just catch, your, uh, catch a glimpse of, of your face and your eyes. And now to this one who is able. 
to keep you from falling. And even when you do fall, is able, uh, thank God he is able to help you get back up. To Jesus, who continues to move us on to what is new, not throwing away the old, but opening us up to the new things of his kingdom. To Jesus be all glory and majesty and power and honor and to him alone. And as we say every week here at Park Avenue, I can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens me. We can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens us. Have a great day, everyone.